I'm a solo agency owner who is successfully scaling to between $5,000 to $10,000 per month for four days of effort. And in this video, I'm gonna share insights on how I got here. I'm gonna walk you through the four building blocks of growth. These are your vision for starting an agency, your services and offer, essential AI tools to help you deliver those services, and number four, finding leads. Now I started my own copywriting agency on the side in 2020 and my initial average monthly revenue was only about $500 per month. And as I got better, faster and increase my rates, I'll be sending my first batch of $10,000 invoices this summer. So this video is great timing and backed up by real life experience and also the experience of a team that works with 60,000 plus agency owners. Let's get going. So first, let's talk about your vision. Now, when I talk about your vision, what I'm referring to is you asking yourself, what do I want out of doing this, out of starting an agency? And your vision will determine the model of your AI agency. So I'd like to walk through a couple of examples here of a vision and the advantages and disadvantages you should know. So many entrepreneurs and agency owners I know wanted to start their own AI agency or their own marketing agency. And their vision is to make millions per year and help local businesses succeed at the same time. That's their dream and that's absolutely awesome. Now the advantages of that approach are very high revenue potential, the feeling of being a successful entrepreneur in your community, and of course, being your own boss. And the feeling of that cannot be understated. Now the disadvantages are that it can take time. There's a lot of hard work involved. It's high risk because you don't magically get to 1 million in annual revenue overnight. Your earnings can be lumpy, and the biggest disadvantage in my opinion is unless you eventually decide to open an office or get employees, it can be socially isolating. Another model is what I call the transitional model. This is one where you've started an AI agency on the side, but you're working at a job. And the idea is that you're growing your side hustle until it takes off and you can then quit your day job. The advantages, you've got the security of your corporate or day job and your probably funneling some of that income and know-how into growing your agency. And the disadvantages are that it can be tricky to juggle both ventures. And the timing of when you transition from your job to your agency full-time requires careful planning. I like to think of that as a medium risk approach. And the third one, and this is the one I fit into, is the low risk approach. I have my salary full-time from work, uh, business income from my agency, and passive income from things like rents, stocks and bonds and high interest accounts. The advantages are that you've got multiple income sources and as far as my job goes, it gives me immense social satisfaction, something that's really important to me because I'm an extrovert. You also gain lots of connections, so most of my agency clients are actually my former employers. Now the disadvantages are that because you've got different ventures, it can take more time to grow your agency than if you were to purely focus on growing your agency full time. And if it's not done the right way, managing a job and an agency can be time consuming. So being efficient is the key to make sure you can enjoy time with friends and family on weekends rather than just work, work, work at your full time job and do stuff for your agency. And this is where I'd love to ask you folks a simple question that would mean the world to me if you could respond to it in the comments section. Which of the models mentioned do you resonate with and why? Please drop a comment. I'd genuinely love to know and please smash those like and subscribe buttons and that notification bell, it would mean the world to me and my team. And your perspective could help others decide which path they want to go down, the high, medium, or low risk. Okay, so the next step is your services and what you're gonna offer. And for this one, in my opinion, the best way to approach it is to think about three things. First, what are you passionate about yourself? I personally love writing and investing, and as demand from my clients has grown, I've expanded into SEO and email marketing related to that um, general niche. I've also added automations to my repertoire and helped my clients streamline workflows. Now, you might have an affinity for creating wicked automations yourself or to help businesses automate tasks like requesting reviews, and you may have a really strong grasp of AI tools that could be useful for them. So maybe you could start there. Second, is it profitable? When you're running an agency, you don't want to be selling commoditized products or selling them in a way that it feels commoditized and earn chump change for it. We want to make serious money out of this. Really take your time to align your passion to the money. I always like to tell people about the 40% rule for the services you sell or resell. For it to be worth your time, you want to be keeping at least $40 in your pocket for every $100 you sell. And hopefully that $100 is very easy to sell. 
And that's a great segue to the next point. Is it easy to sell? I don't want to drag this video out, so I'll point you to my earlier episode where I share five profitable and easy to sell agency services for beginners. Please check that out for more ideas and importantly, pricing and packaging ideas for different solutions. Now, when it comes to selling, I want to make something very, very clear. Your services and offer are two different but related things. The service is the great work that you're going to do for your clients and the offer is how you sell it and package it. You need to be very clear cut about how you position your AI agency and what makes you unique. For example, let's say you used to be a plumber, just as an example, okay? That already gives you an edge when approaching other plumbers because you understand their issues. Now, your other edge could be that you're one of the few AI agencies in town that offer chatbots. And you can install uh, these chatbots on a website in 24 hours and guarantee 20 new leads per week. Now, just from that example, your offer becomes 24-7 automated guaranteed lead capture for plumbers. Now, that's a good segue to step three, which is the essential AI tools to bring your offer and services to fruition for clients. Now, while I mainly focus on content and a few automations, I know many other agency owners who run their AI agency full time and sell a whole basket of products. And based on our combined experience, this is what I can tell you about when it comes to thinking about the tools you use in your business. First, simplicity is essential. The less subscription services you rely on in order to provide services to your clients, the better. The software marketplace is inundated with different options. There's something for AI social marketing, something else for AI chatbots, a customer relationship management system uh, sits somewhere else and an email marketing system uh, is on another subscription. Now, if you're a one person agency, your financials and efficiency is going to be completely wrecked if you're paying for 10 different systems to perform 10 different tasks. So really think about building a small but mighty toolkit. I'll give you a couple of examples my, of my favorite tools as a copywriter. I personally love Google Gemini and ChatGPT to help with copywriting, and I've created a document of my own prompts to make my copywriting process as efficient and as scalable as possible. And I especially love that with Gemini, I can now just talk to Google instead of type up prompts. Oris AI is an awesome and very cost-effective transcribing tool. So when I do interviews or I get voice files from my clients, I just upload it and get the transcript straight away super cost effective as well. Then of course, there's other things like my Microsoft subscription and Vendasta to manage billing and social marketing. Now I only use a couple of tools, three of them are virtually free. So my cost base is super low and that's important to me as a one person agency. Now, all that being said, you do need to have human allies in addition to robot allies when running a one person agency. So where you have excess demand, you'll need the help of quality freelancers, especially for high skill stuff where you cannot compromise on quality. So for you, I'd really take the time to think about who else and what else could you need. So if you're a workflow automations agency, for example, ask ChatGPT. What freelancers and other assistants and other labor could I need when my demand is at high capacity for my services? Okay, and it'll come up with a list. And what I'd recommend doing is reaching out to those people, whether you find them on um, a freelancing platform or through referrals, get their contact details, get to know them, review their portfolio um, so that you are not scrambling at the last minute when you've got a tidal wave of work coming your way. Second, and this is a personal, I wish I'd done the sooner moment for myself and many other established agencies, get your billing and tracking in order straight away. As a one person agency, you're gonna get lots and lots of projects and you'll be spending many hours doing them. So if you're charging say $200 per hour for a project and you forgot whether you spent five hours on it or 10 hours on it, that's a thousand dollar loss on you. So clients also want you to send their invoices quickly because they need to manage payments according to their own accounting rules. So please get those things in place. And we're at the last step, which is finding leads. Now, personally, I was a business reporter in Australia for 10 plus years and I had a crazy dream of moving to Canada. So I did in 2020. Um, when I got my visa, I told my whole network on LinkedIn that I was moving and some of my connections reached out offering work on the side because it's hard to find good finance writers. So again, luckily for me, um, I had the initial connections and I just kept doing the work on the side. It only started as maybe an article here, an article there, and then two clients became five, 
partly from referrals because I love networking and networked with the right people on LinkedIn and in person. Uh, the whole point of all that is think about who you know about. Could you leverage your, your connections from the corporate world? Could you get referrals from friends? Those are your easiest places to start, but of course, a lot of your leads are going to be found outbound and through things like cold calling. Now, what could help you here is good prospecting software that makes it easy to find local businesses to target and gives you the sales intelligence or data to understand their needs. So if you're selling AI social marketing and SEO and you can get the data to show that a local business needs help with those things and it's getting outdone by its competitors, that's a really easy way to start a conversation with a business owner. And there you have it. Those are the four steps or four pillars of a solo AI agency model. I really hope you enjoyed that video and the personal insights that I brought to the table here. Please drop a comment in the chat and let me know what you think of this approach I laid out. And if you have anything you'd like to add, um, please let's share our knowledge on how we can all be successful solo agency operators. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and that notification bell. Have a great day and good luck with your venture as a solo AI agency entrepreneur.